This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rasmo, and I've reviewed a bunch of movies from your childhood that I didn't even know were known. There are some gems and some that I don't want to watch anymore. But this one, this movie I'm reviewing today, decided to take their cake and eat it too. I mean, just look at it. You can't look at this and tell me the producers didn't put their whole producy into this movie. They handpicked the best writers and prayed to the animation gods to give them the most blessed animators on this earth to give us this. I want that ballad! Can't you go somewhere else? Just be my hero and go pick some orchids. I'm not your hero! I mean, it's... Ah! Okay, I'll put my sass in my pocket and actually show you what this movie is. Because I thought it was supposed to be a funny bad kind of movie and that my patrons just requested it for shits and giggles. You know, to make me suffer in watching through this weirdly ugly movie. But to my surprise, it's actually a kind of okay movie with some solid voice acting and somewhat decent world building. Granted, there's a lot of plot holes and just all around random stuff going on in this world that is just, well, I won't sugarcoat it, downright idiotic, but in a fun way. This movie is actually on YouTube. You can watch it now if you have the extra time on your hands to check it out for yourself because there will be spoilers in this video. But if not, then you can just stay here and let me tell you everything because goodness gracious, is this a beautiful train wreck of a movie. Emma's Wings, A Bella Sarah Tale is a movie directed by Brian Dusher, Dusherer, Dusherer? This is what it's supposed to sound like. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Dutch Shearer. Brian has some works that you probably heard of, like Glasses or Poco. Oh yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Though on a serious note, those were all his works being in the animation department, which were both stop motion, as well as working on 2018's Next Gen, which is a really good film that I suggest you guys check out. It's on Netflix last time I checked, but he hasn't directed a full-length film yet until... Emma's Wings. Now you must be wondering, hey, if he has such a background on animation and even go on to work on a really good future project like Next Gen, then what the hell happened here? Right, son, right! Um, yeah. Same. I didn't expect the director of Emma's Wings to be an animator with a lot of backing on animation since 1991. And even though majority were all shorts, the animation wasn't really that bad. I don't know the answer to this, but what I do know was that the animation was the only bad thing with this movie. Everything else from the humor, the characters, and the world they were trying to set up was okay. I'm using trying very loosely here because let's be real. No matter how much they try, the animation really weighs the whole thing down. I think I've stalled on long enough and I don't want to leave you guys in the dark with this, but Emma's Emma's Wing, or if you want to find it on YouTube, the title is gonna be Bella Sarah Emma's Wings, is about a girl who loves to sing and make music, but while she was writing on her mother's journal, some furries, <clears throat> I mean some wolves appear, and my gosh, just look at the animation. <laughs> I'm having an aneurysm. <gasps> anyway, these wolves appear, led by my personal favorite character, Mirfor. Look at this silly guy, sniffing the ground, jumping on all fours even though he has a wolf form. I'll talk about the characters later because I promise you all of them are really interesting to talk about. Well, most of them anyway. Mirfor steals the book, Colm, Emma's cousin, tries to get it back but gets sucked into the portal so now Emma has to go find Colm and her mother's journal and find out more about her special lineage and the world called North of North, a place of magical horses which I don't don't doubt it, but let me show you the three legendary horses that greeted Emma as she arrived in North of North. Yeah, <laughs> pretty wild and magical, huh? Emma tried to get the Valkyrie's ballad, aka her mother's journal back from Ivana, who wants to get the ballad for herself and she explains her plan pretty simply here. I want the secrets to Roland's guard castle. I want the secrets to horse magic. I want to steal their magic and give it to you and the mere wolves. Sarah explains to Emma that only a Valkyrie can stop Ivena, so she gives a little pep talk and upgrades Wings, that's the name of her horse, with Wings! Whoa! Wings looks a hell of a lot more magical than the legendary ones, I'm not gonna lie. They meet up with Colm and go on to try and get the ballad back. So of course, the comic relief Colm was the bait and distraction, getting the wolves' attention, and I kid you not, he was given a flying horse, and he had the genius idea of running around in circles doing this.
jetness. He did all of that parkour when he could have just flown up. Or maybe just kicked the wolves. He has a magical horse for goodness sake. Those aren't magical wolves, by the way. They're just actual puppies turned into wolves. So, you know... You know. To cut the little adventure short, they failed and Ivana got the ballad to access Ronald's castle. And now Emma's feeling down, that she's not a proper Valkyrie, and that she isn't fit to be the one to help North of North against Ivana. But after a quick pep talk from her cousin and the girl named Deru who she just met, she then thought of a way to go against Ivana. How, you may ask? <laughs> well... No! You're mine! shorter for you guys you're welcome but she was playing tag of war with Ivana for a while my gosh but in the end Emma wins and Ivana and Mirfor flees and I guess Sarah was also there uh, I don't know they celebrated and have these selfies as remembrance and then Emma and Calm go home with their magical horses through the generic free-to-use copyright cloud background the end now before we dive into my opinions about this movie a bit of spoilers about how I think of this I don't hate the movie at all if you're surprised so am I but we'll talk about that later. For now, I want to make you guys jealous and hungry with today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko. If you want to grab some modern Japanese snacks, Tokyo Treat is the one to go. But if you want to have a taste of the authentic, traditional taste of Japan's rich culture, what Sakura Ko has in their boxes is definitely something you'd want to try. This month, we're celebrating the spooky Halloween season with Tokyo Treat and the serene, beautiful autumn leaves season with Sakura Ko. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko are subscription for boxes to be delivered containing Japanese snacks you can only get in Japan right to your doorstep along with a magazine that shows you everything you need to know about the snacks you got. It's also really cool that they have the allergens and ingredients of the snack in the magazine so you know exactly what you're eating. I don't have any allergies that I know of, but if I did, that would be largely appreciated. Let me show you what's in my box that they sent me earlier. Early, as soon as my dog gets the hell out of the frame. In Tokyo Treats box called Halloween Snack Hall, I tasted the Palinki Mentaiko Corn Snack. I've tasted a similar snack of the same brand a few boxes back, and they definitely never disappoint. I always love the corn snacks from Tokyo Treat. And what's corn chips without some soda? They also have the Kobe Japanese Cola that you know, tastes like cola. But I do like this better because it's not overly sweet, it's just right. You also get a bunch more snacks like the Kit Kat Sweet Potato, the Pokemon Halloween Pie that has the three starters from Gen 9, and there's a lot more little snackies in here, but I just want to special mention the Kokea Salt and Sesame Oil Potato Chips, because I ate it with my family and it gets the Rosmo family seal of approval. We liked it a lot. Sakurako, on the other hand, shows off Kyoto's beautiful autumn season with their Kyoto's Crimson Leaves box. Try saying that five times. Sakurako partnered with local Kyoto snack makers to give you goodies like the Sakurako Banana White Chocolate or the yuzu dorayaki. I took a bite from the yuzu dorayaki and to my surprise, it tasted like orange. Apparently it's supposed to taste like that because it's intended to be citrusy. So if that's your cup of tea, this dorayaki is definitely for you. Along with the ones I mentioned, they also have the cute heart wasanbon senbei, which is just hard biscuits and it's just cute and oh, oh one heart is broken. Oh, parang kayo lang. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The Atsuka pear jelly with the cute leaf design at the bottom. And oh, they also have the Momiji cookie that I liked so much because, you know, just look at the design. Last month it was a fan and now it's a leaf on a stick. A stick. Listen, in Sakura Ko boxes, they have this little thing where they give you tableware. Sometimes it's a little cup, sometimes it's little cute saucer plates. But in this month's box, it's a small bowl. But here in the Philippines, we actually call it platito. Is it a platito? Or is it just straight up patasa? I don't know. Nigualam. Either way, it's bigger than the previous ones and I like their design. Very cute. I love it. If that made you guys hungry, then you can use my promo code ROSMO to get $5 off of your first purchase. <laughs> no need to thank me. It's all in a day's work. Thanks again Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the review. Now let's talk about some background on this movie. Like, why was this movie made? Well, with a tiny bit of digging, I was surprised to find out that Belisara was actually a well-known trading card game. And you guessed it, it's just a bunch of different kinds of horses. Which, I don't judge. I 
think that's great. If Yu-Gi-Oh can have a bunch of blue eyes dragon decks that all deserve to burn in a fire, I think Belisara can show off some sweet mains with their card game. I mean, look at this horse with a scarf or this horse with leaves for wings. I'm not a horse gal, but even I can appreciate these unique designs for the horses instead of the three boring ass horses we got in the movie. The movie is apparently based on the lore of the card game. Yes, I was also surprised that the card game of horses that I only find out now has lore. But I read that they slightly changed how Emma appeared and saved North of North. Now correct me if I'm wrong, people who grew up with Belisara, but from what I can differentiate is that in the lore of the card game, Emma outsmarted Ivena not by belting a song and playing tug of war, but releasing something called the Lord Herd, which are four different herds of horses that went into hiding from Ivena, namely the herd Sunflower, herd Moon Fairy, herd Starlight, and herd Mustang. And since they're supposedly herds, I can only assume how many horses Emma released to fight off Ivena. I didn't really read much into the lore of Belisara, mostly because the story goes back and covers mostly a thousand years before Emma was even born. There are even plot points surrounding Sara, who is apparently a goddess, and Siga. I didn't bother to read too much into it since Sara only had a short introduction, dumped some exposition, and then was barely in the movie until the end. This movie came out September 4th, 2013 with a limited budget, which would explain the tragic state of the animation. But you know how they say animation is nothing if the story is bad? Well, flip that phrase for Emma's wings, because the story and the voice acting really salvaged this movie for me. I admit, my brother and I were laughing a bit at the god-awful animation that was happening on our screens and couldn't believe I had to sit through watching this, but even with the lack of resources in every scene, the story was okay. And the voice acting was great. Giving attention to Ivana and Mirfor, their acting is so good. And their delivery makes the jokes even funnier. They should have an award for this, bruh. Honestly, if you close your eyes and not look at what's happening on screen, you think that this is a good movie. Especially since the soundtrack sounds good as well. While I was watching this, I can't help but think that if it didn't look like a PS2 cutscene, I think it would have been a childhood classic. Ah! What seems to be the problem? This ballad is indecipherable. You can't read it? Yeah, that's what indecipherable means. Oh, this book is easy to read. It's a picture book. Have you tried the ring? None of them is mind-blowing or awe-inspiring, but it's just good enough for anyone who would watch it to just sit back and enjoy. Now let's talk about the characters. I want to talk more about Emma, as she is the main character, but there's really not much to say. She has all the generic main character traits. Strong, brave, stubborn, and talented, with her writing her own songs and being creative. However, I do like how they emphasize how inexperienced Emma is rather than knowing exactly what a Valkyrie is or does. They actually made her lose a battle with Ivena and doubt herself before setting aside her her worries to think about the greater good. Was it executed well? It could have been better. But I still appreciate how they had that scene because any 12 year old kid would be extremely anxious if they were told that only they could save a whole magical kingdom that they only found out hours ago. Then we have Cole. I was so confused on my first watch if it was Cole as in C-O-L-E, but it's actually C-O-L-M. Now, Colm is supposed to be the comic relief, and even though he doesn't have any whips or jokes, I think he has a great dynamic with Emma. He's playful and rowdy, but means well. He messes with Emma, but knows when he goes out of line, when he immediately apologizes when he drops the journal of Emma's late mother that she cherishes so much. Then we have Ivena, who honestly just reminds me of a Barbie antagonist. Remember those old Barbie animated movies? Yeah, Ivena fits right into any of those movies. She has a goal that benefits her and her people... Wolves, maybe? Love her voice and voice acting, by the way. She's not really threatening, but she's entertaining to watch. I like her back and forth with Mirfor. I'm not exactly sure what relationship she has with Mirfor, whether it be a servant, right-hand man, or apprentice. It seems like he's much younger than her, which is why I'm very concerned with this one line. Mirfor! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I could kiss you! What the... No, 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 immortal old lady. I don't care how young you look. You ain't kissing that child looking ass furry. He looks exactly the same age as Colm. And Colm is 12. You could say he ages differently because he's a wolf. Well, we don't really know. So I'm basing from appearances here. Then of course, Mirfor. <laughs> Mirfor is my favorite out of the cast because he's so unapologetically mean and sassy to everyone and isn't even scared to play a prank on Ivena and laugh at her to her face. This boy is getting bossed around, zapped with magic rays, and threatened by Ivena 24-7, but he's still living his best life. We could all be a Mirfor, guys. I don't really have anything to say to Deru or Sarah. Deru is what you see is what you get, the playful friend that helps the cousins along the way with the help of her magic. But then Sarah is just a whole mystery. We know she's magical and wise and someone 
Emma can turn to if she needs some guidance in North of North. But without me reading the wikia for Bella Sara, I wouldn't have known she's got it. I mean, granted I could have connected the dots when she appeared in the sparkle of light and gave wings wings, but I kind of wanted confirmation because I just thought she was a magician or a nature spirit like Deru. All in all, is this movie good? <laughs> yes. And no, if you can look past the animation and just desensitize yourselves with the clunky movement, I bet you'll enjoy it. I suggest you watch it with your friends and don't tell them anything beforehand so you can all have that laugh trip reaction when we first lay eyes on the animation of God's gift to humanity, which is Bella Sarah, Emma's tail. Bella Sarah, Emma's wings? Emma's wings of Bella Sarah tail? I don't know the title anymore. Thanks so much, Aniyushi, for recommending this movie to me. If you have any recommendations or weird hidden gem of animation, let me know down in the comments, and I'll probably eeny meeny miny mo my way through some of them if they interest me. But if you want to force me to watch it, become a patron. I'm not actually sure if I should keep making movie reviews since my content and audience is slowly shifting interests, and movie reviews ain't doing so hot. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. So yeah. Big thanks to my patrons and a big shout out to my patrons Cross, Christian V, Jacob K, Kanger, and F Ignite.